welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 17 of vlogmas i am so excited about this video y'all i've been excited about this video for months i am all about a fresh start i am so excited for the start of a new year i'm so excited about my 2020 goals and i'm so excited to share them with you it has been a whirlwind of the last week or so. It is Sunday. This time last week, I was trying to mentally prepare myself for Cultivate Your Year Live, which was a one day live event that the Cultivate What Matters team, who created the power sheets, put on for all of us to work through our power sheets in one day. In one day. This time last year, I was probably 10 pages through the prep work, maybe. I was struggling to get through the prep work. I was trying to push through. I was trying to make it work, but I was I was struggling because it's not easy. It's hard. You answer some tough questions. You really have to dig deep, but this year I'm so, so ready and I feel so excited because I truthfully feel like I have a better understanding of the why behind all my goals. I know that's not a new thing, right? The why behind your goals, that's been around since the start of goal setting time. But I think I've always struggled to figure it out. I always set goals based on, oh, I should do this, oh, I should do that, you know, I should lose weight, I should declutter my apartment, oh, all the shoulds. And it's not to say that those things aren't on my goals list because they are, but the why behind those things is so much stronger now that I've really dug deep and, and figured it out. So if you're new here, you have no idea what I'm talking about. These are the power sheets. They are a goal setting planner that is meant to help you find the why for all of your goals and really help you uncover which goals are going to be most important to you in the new year. So I am not going to flip through all of my prep work because A, we'd be here forever and B, there are just some things in that prep work that I'm, I don't want to share. But what I am going to share with you today is my word of the year, my 2020 areas of focus, and then my quarter one goals. Are you intrigued yet? I've talked about this in a couple places, so this might not be new news to you, but I am somewhat drastically changing the way that I'm approaching my goals this year. And I think it is gonna be for the better and I can't, I can't wait to share it with you. So let's start flipping. I'm gonna show you a couple things about my power sheets that may help you work through yours. Um, hopefully some of it even applies if you're using a different goal setting system. I think some of it is just general goal setting mindset thoughts. But the first thing I did here in the pocket was put some of the wildcard pages here. Now I will tell you, I did not put all of them here because I knew that if I put all of them here, I would just ignore them and it would just be this pile of papers that took up space in my power sheet. So what I did was I took the stack of wildcard sheets that I had. I had both the set from last summer as well as the set that came with the launch this time. And I picked out the ones that I thought would apply to the goals that I have set for this year. And I put them in this pocket and then I set the other ones aside. I did not throw them out even though some of them I don't think I'll ever use like summer road trip. I don't own a car. But I never know what the future might hold and I might need those someday. So I didn't throw them out, but I decided to just keep this pocket focused. The other thing I did while I was going through the Cultivate Your Year Live workshop is I wrote down all of the quotes that Laura said that really jumped out at me. And you can do the same thing. She has both videos and podcasts working through the power sheets. Now, it is not necessarily gonna be the same in-depth experience that I had with her live, but it's still very valuable, and my recommendation to you would be as you listen to those videos or those podcasts, and I would, I would write down the things that she says that jump out at you, and I'm gonna go back and reference these hopefully monthly when I work on my power sheets, but at least quarterly, I'm gonna try and encourage myself to go through all of those notes. So. I literally did that on every every single page. Here's my name and the date. Um, I liked this 2020 goal ideas. I, I added some stickers only because they were encouraging us to use the entire page of stickers. But truthfully, I didn't get all that fancy on these pages. I just, I just wrote, I just wrote. And then as my hands started to get tired, as it does when you write a lot of pages, I started to write a little bit messier, but I didn't care. I just kept writing. Okay, I'm trying to flip to my word of the year page so that I can share that with you. And the word I have chosen is love. And I have been thinking that this was gonna be my word of the year for quite some time now, but pretty much ever since we got engaged. And I was thinking how wedding planning is gonna be at the forefront of my 2020, how love is, is just gonna be a big part of my year and how I wanted to make sure I kept that at the forefront of everything that I did throughout the year. And as I, as I went through my power sheets, a couple other words jumped out at me and actually, Another word jumped out at me as I was finishing up the goals that I didn't even include like on the initial brainstorm page, but I am gonna stick with love. And the reason is it reminds me of the why. 
Like I, I considered the word energy, I considered the word routine, I considered the word intention, but at the end of the day, the why behind all of the goals that I have for this year is some form of love. Whether it's love for myself and my body, whether it's love for my friends, love for Sam, love for our space, love for my sanity, like it all comes back to love as the why and I want to remember that. I wanna keep that in the forefront. So I'm picking love and I'm sticking with it. All right, now let's get to what I have changed this year about my goal setting process, mentality, you can call it all sorts of things. Last year, I created all kinds of vague goals. That's, that's the word I'm gonna use, they were vague. Okay, so the first one is enhance relationships with Sam, family, and friends. The next one is make my health a priority. The next one is a cozy and clutter-free home. I, the next one is focused finances. All right, the next one is intentional media consumption. They, it wasn't wrong, like they were not bad goals. They were not wrong goals, but they were vague, but I thought, those needed to be the overarching goals for the entire year. So on like the goal page that they have at the beginning of the power sheets, those are the goals that I put there. And I was like, those are the goals for the whole year. and I'm going to stick with it. And I think that that didn't work as well. I'm not going to say it didn't work for me because I'm, I did a lot of things this past year and I definitely feel like I accomplished a lot, but I think it didn't work as well because it is really hard to check those things off at the end of the year, to give yourself a check mark and say, you made your health a priority. I mean, there are ways to do it, but it's not that easy. The other reason was it is hard to break that down. It is hard to take that big overarching goal and break it up into smaller pieces. The other thing that really stuck with me that Laura has said in a number of places is that your brain is really good at focusing on 90 days of goals and that's why they have a quarterly refresh. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a secret here. I never did the quarterly refreshes last year. Not once because I didn't feel like I accomplished my goals, so why would I refresh them? They're still applicable, why would I change them? So this year I wanted something to focus on for 90 days. I wanted something tangible that I could check off at the end of those 90 days that made me feel like I accomplished and then allowed me to really pivot to something different, still within the same world, still within the same idea, but pivot to something different for the next 90 days. You're probably like, Lagan, I need you to give me an example because I'm very confused. So what I decided to do this year for 2020 is I picked eight focus areas. These are the vague categories. These are the overarching things that I would like to focus on in 2020. I did not actually write them on the goal page because those are my quarter one goals. And we'll get to that after I talk about my eight overarching categories. So what I did was I took this wildcard page, which you can get as a printable on their website. And I put my overarching themes for the year and I gave them each a color and I taped it into January for now onto the January tab and next month I'm going to move it and I'm going to tape it onto February. And then I also went ahead and assigned a color to each of those themes. Now the colors are, have nothing to do really with the power sheets. They're not really because I just like those colors because if I picked all my favorite colors, I wouldn't have included this peach. The colors are trying to match as closely as possible to the Moxie Life Planner, which I am planning to use next year and I am going to incorporate both my power sheets and my Moxie Life together. So I wanted the colors to be as close as possible to the Moxie Life colors that they related to. So for example, the blue in Moxie Life is physical health. So I made it blue here as well. See where I'm coming from? So the eight categories are weddings slash marriage. I don't know how many times I have heard, try not to focus as much on the wedding. It's about the marriage. It's about the life that you're building with Sam. And I appreciate all of those sentiments because I know that it's true and it's just one day and our the wedding for us is about the rest of our lives and about our marriage. So I didn't want to write just plan a wedding. I wanted it to be about working on our wedding and our marriage. And you'll see how I've incorporated that in another way. The next one is focusing in on my mental health. The next one is physical health. The next one is friendships, which this is the one thing that surprised me from doing my prep work at how high up it was on the ladder. The next one is focusing on Plan With Lakin and growing Plan With Lakin and some of the ideas that I have for that. The next one is incorporating crafting and memory keeping. I, especially in December, I think December Daily really kicked this off. 
I've been loving it, loving having such a creative outlet and I really just wanted that to be part of my year next year. The next one is routines, which is one of the other words I considered for my word of the year, but ended up sticking with love. And then the last one is focusing on our apartment. And I didn't write purge or declutter because that's not, and that is gonna be part of it, but I just wanted it to be about the apartment in general because some of it might be about decor as well. So those are the eight overarching themes. And if this was 2019 Lakin, these would have been the eight goals that I stuck on that first goal page of the, of the power sheets. And then I would have had to break them down and being able to check off focusing on physical health at the end of the year would be very difficult. Like I said, what I've decided to do is take those eight categories and pick a quarterly goal for each one, something that is for the next 90 days that I can really focus on and likely give myself a check at the end of the quarter. So the first thing I did was cross off where it said my 2020 goals and wrote my quarter one goals. And then when I get to the spring refresh, so the spring refresh has the same page and all it says at the top, it says goal refresh and it has it like, it looks like the exact same page. I'm gonna write quarter two goals and I'm gonna fill all those in. I'm so excited about this. I'm just, I'm very pumped about this new setup. So the first one is the wedding one and it says complete tasks on 12 months plus list. I have created, I have created an entire wedding to-do list that I have broken up by timeline. And so for quarter one, my wedding goal is just to check off all the things on the 12 month plus list because we don't have an exact date yet. Hopefully we will very soon, but it's going to be spring of 21. So we will pretty much hit the year mark at the end of quarter one. So I wanna have anything that is on the list as 12 months plus checked off or like a really good reason why it's not checked off. And that is something very tangible that I can check off at the end of the quarter. The next one is the mental health goal, and that is to complete the one little word project each month. I recently talked about that in a weekly vlog, so go check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. And this is also gonna satisfy my crafty goal as well. I love how the goals overlap sometimes. I think that's really great, but it's really more about the mental health and embracing my word of the year, reminding me of my why, and really embodying love. The next one is my physical health one, and that is to establish a cooking routine. I know that you cannot outrun a bad diet. I know that. And I am still going to incorporate physical fitness into my quarter one, just because this is the main focus, doesn't mean that I'm going to not work out for the entire quarter. What it means is that I'm really going to focus in on the cooking routine. And here is, here's where I feel like it really differentiates because last year, right, the goal was make my health a priority. There's a lot of things that go into that category, physical health, mental health eating right, working out. Like there were just so many things that went into that category. So then when the month rolled around, I would put something food related and something physically, physical fitness, and then maybe like something self-care related all on my attending list. And trying to focus on all those things at once made it worse. So again, just because I am focusing on this doesn't mean I'm not gonna necessarily do some of those other things, but I am gonna give myself a little bit of grace when those other things may fall off the wagon because this is the one that I'm focusing on the most. So I really wanna establish a good cooking routine of meal planning, grocery shopping, meal prepping, and cooking during the weeks, and having, I wanna organize my recipes, I wanna get my pantry in a much better state, like all those things fall into this category. And this is something that is not as tangible that I can check off at the end of the quarter, but I still feel like it's something that I will either feel like I did a good job of or I didn't. All right, the next one is my friendship related goal. And this one's gonna sound a little bit funny, but my goal is to develop a friend directory. I toyed around with the name of what I was gonna call this. I, I think I, I list was just seemed kind of too lame. And there was another word I was considering. Either way, what I wanna do is have essentially a list of the friendships that I want to tend to and work on over the course of the year, and I wanna fill it in with information about them. So what is their love language? What's their favorite color? Are they coffee or tea? What, like, what are these things about them that I should know, and I probably do deep down know a lot about my friends, but if I don't, I'm just gonna ask them, and I want to create a space where I can keep all this information. I'm very tempted to do it on my phone. As somebody who loves paper and pen, I, I'm like, oh, my phone, but I think having it with me at all times is, is helpful. I thought about a spreadsheet, but I don't always like, can't always access that. I guess I could do Google Sheets. Maybe that's the answer. I think, I think that might be the answer is doing Google Sheets. So it is still a spreadsheet that I can access on my computer, but it's also always on my phone. Glad I just, that was one of the action items on this thing I can check right off. Okay, the plan with Lakin goal for Q1 is to solidify a YouTube routine. And this may seem silly because you're like, you have been uploading Monday, Wednesday, Friday for like 18 months now. What's wrong with your routine? Here's what's wrong with my routine. 
I am the queen of procrastination and I am very good at staying up super late or getting up super early the day a video needs to go up because I procrastinated getting it edited or getting it filmed even. And I I have to had to admit that. I had to admit that if I wanted to start adding in all these other layers that I wanted to uh, with Plan With Lake, and there are so many things in my head of things I'd like to do, I needed to solidify what I'm currently doing first. I needed to make sure that that was working before I added in anything else. So what I want to do as part of this goal is create an analytics routine that I do every month or every quarter. I want to review my 2019 stuff. I want to create a plan for 2020. And then I want to make sure that my videos are uploaded and like ready to go and scheduled at least 24 hours in advance. Like that, that's going to be the, the rule for me. And if I feel like I got to a good place at the end of the quarter, I can check that off and I can move on to something else. Okay, the memory keeping crafting one is to finish my 2020 memory keeping. I am way behind. I think the last thing I memory kept was like the 4th of July. Is it that bad? But a lot of it after that is travel, but still, I have a lot of work to do on that one. All right, the routine goal is to focus on my morning routine. I actually wrote, create a morning routine that you love. A morning routine that I'm excited to get up for in the morning. I got into a really good groove last year and then I just like, plummeted and my morning routine went right out the window. I also, part of this, and I feel like I should write that down so I don't forget it, is to continue my morning routine as much as possible on the weekends. Maybe not exactly the same time because the girl likes her sleep and I'd like to get a little bit more sleep on the weekends, but the same routine when I wake up, even if it is an hour or two later than what I normally do during the week. Okay, and then the last one is my apartment related goal and that is to purge and document my wardrobe. If I had a goal to declutter my entire apartment for 2020, just doing my wardrobe in quarter one is probably not 25% of the way there. Like it probably isn't implying that I'm gonna finish it in 2020. And I've had to accept that that's okay. And same thing with some of these other ones. I posted this on Instagram, but what I did was I created a mind map. I pulled it in half so I could stick it in my pocket. But I created this mind map that's got all eight of the categories and all the ideas that I have related to all the categories. And the truth is, this probably won't all happen in 2020. Like there are only so many hours in a day and I understand that. But if I can get a lot of this stuff done, I'm gonna feel really accomplished. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like highlight, cross off things as I do them. So as I feel like I got my cooking routine down, I'm gonna, where is that? <laughs> oh, here it is cooking. I'm like, I'm gonna cross that off. But look at all these things around physical health, right? There are lots of things that are surrounding physical health. And I picked one of like 10 for quarter one. On that pace, I'm not going to get them all done in 2020, and that is okay. I am prioritizing and then honing in on certain things, and some things will likely just get pushed to next year, or they'll fall off because they weren't as important and they didn't get prioritized or whatever it is. And on some level, I've, I've questioned it a little bit and thought maybe I'm not being ambitious enough. Maybe this isn't like enough. Like if I think of how many hours all of these things are gonna take, like is that filling up my entire calendar, or is there gonna be some space? Guess what, Lakin? It's okay if there's a little bit of space. It's okay if there's a little bit of margin in your life. Like, that is not a bad thing. So that's what I'm trying to focus on. I'm trying not to overcommit. I'm trying to get specific with my quarterly goals and not let these big, vague concepts hold me back from feeling like I actually accomplished something this year. So the other thing I'm doing to sort of make this system work for me, the first thing I did was I took these little goal cards that they have available, it comes in a pack, uh, I think of 12. And originally I had said I was gonna use these for monthly goals somehow, I was gonna do a monthly thing and put it somewhere, but I decided to go ahead and write my quarterly goals on there and then I'm putting it on the back of my desk so I can look at that all the time. The other thing I did to make this work for me was photocopy something. So right after this page, right, that's got your 2020 goals, there are these action pages. So it's an action worksheet plan. Let me see if I'll show you. I'll show you the wedding one because this one doesn't really have anything super personal on it. And so it's got like what your goal is, what your why, what the impact of your goal is, a brainstorm of some ideas. And then on the other side, it's got mini goals and then starting steps for each of the mini goals. And I think this, these pages also had something to do with the mindset that, well, I had to pick goals that were gonna last for the whole year and I had to stick with them because there are no more of these pages in the power sheets. So if I change my whole set of goals at 
quarter two, I'm not gonna have any more action pages. And these action pages are gonna be just for my quarter one goals. Well, that doesn't make sense. Shouldn't these action pages be for my entire year goals? And how am I gonna make that work? Photocopies, that's how I'm gonna make it work. So before I wrote on them, now if you've already written on them, I don't really have an answer for you. Um, I am not planning to share this file with anybody. In fact, it's not even a file, I just photocopied. If you've already written on yours and you want to try the same sort of mindset, just do it on a different piece of paper, on a sticky note, in a notebook, you, ha you have somewhere to write it down. If you haven't, and you're interested in trying out this quarterly system, then make a photocopy. That's all I did. You could go to Staples if you don't have access. I did it at work. All I did was make one copy, and then I used whiteout over where it said the number, so it said goal one, and I whited out the one, and then right here it said your goal for 2020, and I, I whited that out too. So then what I can do is I can do goal one, and then for quarter, two when I get to quarter two and then on the next one I can do goal two for quarter two and so on and so forth and I printed out 24 to get me through quarters two three and four for all eight goals and I I just I'm really excited it's not the perfect system the perfect system would be that it was already the action pages were bound in here but they're not going to be I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is just fill them out and then um clip them like paper clip them into my book so that's it that is how I am tackling 2020 and my overarching themes for the year and then my focuses for quarter one. I think overall just having more patience with myself and with the process as well as knowing that if even if I don't get everything done that I had originally dreamed of getting done in 2020 that it's still going to be an amazing year is just a really important piece of this whole thing. Oh, there is one more piece of this that I wanted to share with you that I have shared on Instagram and in another video, but I, I want to include it as part of this video in case you haven't heard and just talk a little bit more about it. So you're probably like, wait, you said you were going to do wedding slash marriage and it only looked like you had wedding on there. You're right. I didn't put anything in the actual goal about the marriage because the way that I'm going to tackle that is through a book. So last year I really implemented reading into my daily routine. And I read way more books last year than I had ever read in like the history of my adult post-college life. And it was awesome. But I was choosing books, not really based on anything in particular. I was just kind of choosing books that I'd either wanted to read or somebody recommended, or it was the hot new book at the time or whatever. I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't pick books with purpose. This year I am picking books with purpose. And the way that I'm doing that is each quarter, I am going to pick a book that goes with each of my goals. Now, eight books a quarter is a little bit ambitious for me. When I was on my game, I was doing about six. I was doing two per month when I was on my game. So even if I'm on my game, eight a month is a stretch, but I'm ready to commit to it. I mean, that makes the total 32. That's not that crazy of a number. I know people that read like over a hundred books in a year. So I can do 32, I think. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make 32 work. I'm actually starting one now, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. So let me share with you the books that I am choosing for quarter one. So the wedding marriage book that I'm choosing is The Five Love Languages. It's something that I have purchased. I purchased as an anniversary present for us and I've been wanting to read it. And then it was the most recommended book when I asked for marriage book recommendations. So that is number one on my list. The mental health book that I'm gonna read is Cultivate by Laura Casey. I read her other book, Making Things Happen. Um, and I like kind of sped through that one. And then I started Cultivate last year and then kind of fell off the wagon and like didn't finish it. So I'm ready to commit to that and finish that book. The cooking routine I'm, book I'm gonna read is not necessarily a cooking routine book. I couldn't really find one that was about a cooking routine unless it was like a cookbook. So I'm reading one called Bright Line Eating. It was also highly recommended when I asked for recommendations. Um, and then I kind of spread through the reviews on Amazon. It looked really applicable and really helpful. So that is the book I'm reading there. The friendship book that I'm gonna read is called Text Me When You Get Home. It was recommended by a YouTuber that I love to watch, Ingrid Nielsen. She recommended it in one of her gift guide videos and said that she loved the book. She actually had the author on her podcast. And so I really wanted to read that book. All right, the YouTube book that I'm gonna read is is called Superfans by Pat Flynn. I, Amy Landino has recommended this book a number of times. She's had Pat on her podcast. It's been on my list for a very long time and just something that I want, I, I wanted to make a priority this year. The memory keeping book or crafty book I'm gonna read is Craft a Life You Love by Amy Tangerine. I also have had this book for a while. I bought it back when Cindy did it as a book club book and then never finished it. But there's only one other book I have in this category. So if you have any recommendations for like a crafty book, I'm here for them. The morning routine book, 
I bet you can guess, is Good Morning, Good Life by Amy Landino, also doing that for Cindy's book club. That's probably the first book that I'm gonna read, aka I've already started reading it, um, out of all of these. And then the wardrobe book that I'm gonna read is The Curated Closet. I've been pondering with this book ever since the Buy the Book podcast that I listened to talked about it, um, but I'm it just seemed like it fit perfectly, so I went ahead and ordered it on Amazon. And some of these I already own, and the rest of them should be here this week. So I'm excited to get started on those books and again if eight books a quarter doesn't work in the first quarter we will pivot and do something different in the second quarter and some of these categories do have more books in their like category section than others like the marriage section i've got like 30 books in that section that i want to read the fitness one has a, has a good number the youtube one has a good number um but like the routine ones the crafty ones doesn't really have any at all the mental health i feel like i have a pretty good number in that recommendation category as well so i'm still going to work on building out my book list and same the same thing goes with the goals this to read book list is like 100 books long obviously not happening this year, but I'm keeping track of all of the books that I've considered for the future. Okay, that's it. I'm so excited, y'all. I'm so excited for the new year. I'm so excited about my goals, and my power sheets, and I'm excited for you. Let me know in the comments, what is one goal that you are really trying to focus in on in 2020? What are you making a priority next year? That's gonna be it for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. Truly, why do you always decide to eat right when I sit down to film in this spot? Let's try this again. Who created the power sheets? They're upside down. I'm trying to flip through, flip to, flip through. The next one is routines, which was one of the other word of the years. Word of the years? Words of the year? You can't say that. Purge and document my wardrobe. My wardrobe.